Thank you, Jake and Shelley. Thank you, choir and orchestra, children, senior adults. You'll get an opportunity in a few minutes to express your thanks to them. They're coming back to sing some more after I get finished. We wanted to take just a minute tonight to focus on the real meaning of Christmas. We've been reminded by that, by the narration, by the singing tonight, but I want us to focus just for a couple of minutes on the real meaning of Christmas. You know, we hear a cliche this time of the year, and we hear it a lot. We say, or people says, Jesus is the reason for the season. But you would never know that by the way we act sometimes, the way we treat what Christmas is all about, how commercial Christmas has become. You would never know that we really believe that Jesus really is the reason for the season. But he is. The story of Christmas is about a little baby. He was a special baby, a very special baby. There was a lot of things special about him. Do you know throughout history that it takes three people in order to have the birth of a child? It takes a mama, it takes a daddy, and it takes God. But there was only one time in history, and it was with this special baby, that the earthly daddy was removed from that equation. Didn't take an earthly daddy. He didn't, get a, didn't have a sin nature because he never was, never had an earthly daddy in the birth process. You've heard it said he was a special baby for a lot of reasons. You've heard it said he was the only baby ever born that was as old as his father and older than his mother. You ever thought about that? Only baby in history ever been born that was as old as his father and older than his mother. He was special. He was such a special baby that after the prompting of the angel, the shepherds in their fields dropped what they were doing and the Bible said they made haste to get to the Christ child. He was special. They didn't know him, but after the angel prompted them, they knew there was something special about this little child. He was special in that the wise men, after being called and prompted by the angel, the wise men came to visit, came a long way to visit this special little one, and they brought some very expensive gifts with them. They brought gold, they brought frankincense, they brought myrrh. All of those signified something that indicated and proved how very special this baby was. He was very special. But as Annie reminded us a while ago, I'm glad that's what we celebrate, the birth of the, your Christ child. But I'm glad the story didn't end there. He was a special baby in that he grew up as a child and a young man he lived 33 years on his, this earth, and he was special and unique in that. He lived 33 years and never committed a sin. The only person ever to walk the face of the earth that never committed a sin, never had an evil thought cross his mind. That's the story of Christmas. This child that was born, he lived among us, lived a perfect life, but I'm grateful the story didn't end there. 33 years later, the purpose of this child that was born on Christmas Day, he had a purpose unlike all of the children that we've had, all the children we have in our church. This little child had a special purpose. You know what his purpose was? He came to die. That was his purpose. So he lived here among us for 33 years, and God gave his only begotten perfect son to go to the cross to be a substitute for man, women, boys and girls sin like my, like me and like you. So he lived among us for 33 years. He went to the cross to die for my sin and for your sin. The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin for us. And I want you to personalize that tonight. The Bible says, 
he who knew no sin became sin for Jim. You can plug your name in. He who knew no sin became sin for you, whatever your name is, and I. He was the perfect sacrifice. Well, I'm glad that story didn't end there. He hung on a cross. And if you hear anybody say this time of the year or ever that they took his life, you correct them. He didn't take his life. They didn't take his life. He gave his life for you and I. He gave his life freely. But I'm glad the story didn't end there. He was buried in a borrowed tomb. And three days later, he rose from the dead for our justification. He came out of the grave. Amen. And because he did that, you were to make your way to Israel tonight. You can go to where they believe that grave happened, and the grave's open, and you can look in that grave, but I'm glad to report tonight the tomb is empty. He was raised again for my justification and for your justification. But here's what I want to tell you tonight. He provided a very, this special baby that lived to be a special young man that gave his life for you and I, went to the tomb and was raised again. Because of that, he provided a very special gift for every person within the sound of my voice, for every person that's ever been born. He provided a very special gift. Now, I want to say something about that gift tonight, quickly, then I'll be through. Just like when you gather around your Christmas tree in your home this year and you take those gifts out and your boys and girls, your parents provide gifts for you, they can place a gift in your hand. But guess what? In order for it to become yours, what do you have to do? You have to open that gift. You have to receive that gift. I can give you a gift tonight and I can hand it to you and I intend for you to have it, but until you take that gift, until you receive that gift, it'll not become yours. I'll tell you the special gift that this special baby and this special young man that went and gave his life and rose again for our justification has provided a gift for every man, every woman, every boy, every girl. We don't deserve it, never did anything to deserve it. None of us here tonight have deserved it. Many of us have reached out and received that gift. But perhaps there may be someone here tonight that would say, you know, there's never been a time in my life that I've received the gift of salvation. Jesus provided that gift for us, but it's not ours until we cry out and say, Lord, I realize I'm a sinner. I believe that you died for me, was buried and resurrected. I'm willing to confess my sins, invite you into my heart and life, and ask you to be my Lord and Savior. He stands ready to do that, but unless you've never received that gift, you don't have the gift that he intended for every man, woman, boy, and girl to have. 